You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 4th of April. PM Modi kicks off NDS campaign with rallies in Bihar and West Bengal. Activists highlight Pakistan's terror infrastructure, rights violations in POK. And sacred Lord Buddha relics from Sri Lanka presented to Dalai Lama in India. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi kicked off the ruling BJP-led NDA's Lok Sabha poll campaign in Bihar state on Thursday with a rally in Jamui, his first in the state since the announcement of the elections. The Prime Minister said the world is witnessing how India's stature has increased in the last 10 years. Hitting out at the opposition Congress, he said, when the grand old party was in power, terrorists from small countries struggling for wheat supplies could strike at will. Visibly pleased at the huge turnout, he said, it seems that the people of Bihar have decided to help the NDA win all the 40 seats in the state and achieve the 400-plus target in the country. पूरा बिहार कह रहा है फिर एक बार फिर एक बार लेटर इन द डे पीएम मोदी हेल्ड अ मैसिव रैली इन कूच बिहार इन वेस्ट बंगाल एंड लैश्ड आउट एट त्रिनमूल कांग्रेस गवर्नमेंट इन द स्टेट the elections across India will be held in seven phases between April 19th and June 1st and votes will be counted on 4th of June. And amid the Kachativu Island issue, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin on Wednesday took a jibe at Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, saying that the ruling party raised the controversy just ahead of general elections. Stalin questioned why the PM did not ever speak to the Sri Lankan government to return back the island. He further said how PM Modi remembers that Kachativu took place during Nehru and Indira Gandhi period but does not remember an event that happened two years back. Meanwhile, giving its first reaction over the issue, Sri Lanka on Thursday said that the row was settled 50 years ago and there was no need to revisit it. Sri Lankan Foreign Minister Ali Sabri said that there is no controversy and that India is having an internal political debate about who is responsible. PM Modi's BJP has alleged that Congress government, led by Nehru and later Indira Gandhi, gave up the island under pressure from Sri Lanka. In a veiled attack at Pakistan, India's National Security Advisor Ajit Dawal on Wednesday highlighted the need to shun double standard and hold sponsors, financiers and facilitators of terrorism accountable. Dawal, who was leading the Indian delegation at the 19th meeting of the Secretaries of the Security Council of Shanghai Corporation Organization in Astana, in his address said, any act of terror committed by whomsoever, whenever and whatever reasons is not justified. Raising the issue of continued threat posed by various terror groups in the SEO region, including those designated by the UNSC like Al-Qaeda, lashkar e taiba and jaish e mohammed he asserted that perpetrators of terrorism should be effectively and expeditiously dealt with, including those involved in cross-border terrorism. He stressed the need to counter the use of technology by terrorists, including drones for cross-border smuggling of weapons and drugs, and said India supports the creation of effective mechanisms for countering terror financing and supports further strengthening of the regional anti-terrorist structure. And the United States on Wednesday reiterated its commitment to conduct a full investigation into the alleged foiled assassination plot against India-designated terrorist Gurpatwan Singh Panno and said that they have made it clear to the Indian government to do the same. Answering a query during daily press briefing, State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller said Washington is looking forward to the results of the investigation over the matter by the Indian side. 
Earlier, in an interview with ANI, US envoy to India, Eric Garcetti, had acknowledged that both countries are working together in the investigation. He, however, also emphasized that a red line should not be crossed and no government employee of any country can be involved in assassination plot of a foreign citizen. Gurpat Pan Singh Panno is a designated terrorist by India who holds American and Canadian citizenship. He has repeatedly issued threats against India. The US had late last year claimed an Indian government employee had hired a hitman to allegedly assassinate Panno, which was foiled by US authorities. New Delhi had refuted any involvement. Moving on. Political activists held a seminar and demonstration in Geneva this week to expose Pakistani terror camps, atrocities and rights violations in POK and Gilgit Baltistan. Take a look. Members of the United Kashmir People's National Party held a seminar on the sidelines of the UNHRC session in Geneva to expose Pakistan for operating terror camps, violating human rights and exploiting natural resources in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and Gilgit-Baltistan. The activist said, while Pakistan falsely claims to have granted autonomy to these territories, elected officials have no say in policy making and people are denied even basic fundamental rights. I repeat, deadly asking world community that the, 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 the terrorist infrastructure still intact in POK and our land, which is known as Azad Kashmir is using as launching pad. Our freedom of expression is totally compromised. And all those newspapers who have any links from the Azad Kashmir is now facing worse kind of a persecution. Terrorism, extremism, and uh, as we know that uh, there are more than 22 teenagers are forcibly taken by the extremist groups in Bag Azad Kashmir for the purpose of jihad training. They will train them, they will send them to Afghanistan or Indian side of Kashmir. We were here to ask international community, United Nations to intervene to protect life, liberty and property of the Kashmiris who are living under Pakistani occupation. The UK PNP activist also staged a demonstration to highlight issues like load shedding, unfair taxes and wheat crisis in POK and Gilgit-Baltistan. They blamed residents of these occupied territories have been at the receiving end of the discriminatory policies of Pakistan that has failed to provide even basic facilities to them. The United Nations Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Assistance in Afghanistan in its latest report has informed that more than 1,000 people in Afghanistan have been killed in the last two years due to landmine and explosive remnants of war. The report states that most of the victims of the detonations were children. Nearly 4 million people live in constant danger with an estimated 1.2 million square meters of land contaminated with landmines and explosives. In a recent tragic incident on April 1st, nine children were killed in a village in Afghanistan's Ghazni province when they detonated an explosive ordinance they found while playing. Lord Buddha's sacred Kapilavastu relics, preserved and protected for generations at a Buddhist temple in Sri Lanka, were presented to the Tibetan spiritual leader the Dalai Lama on Thursday at his residence in India's Dharamshala town. A large number of Buddhist monks were present at the ceremony as the Sri Lankan abbot presented the holy relics to the Dalai Lama out of respect towards his contribution towards the well-being of mankind. The Kapilavastu relics are known for their historical and spiritual importance and serve as a profound link to Lord Buddha's legacy, connecting devotees to his teachings and enlightenment. His Holiness was very, uh, very happy, but uh, he was most importantly he was uh, uh, he made this prayer prayer in front of the Buddha to the relic uh, for the world peace and happiness of all Mother Sanjin beings. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.